Republicans lost the fight over DHS funding, not only when it came to the budget, but the PR war as well. A week from Monday, March 16th, comes another potential showdown over the national debt. That's when Secretary of the Treasury Jack Lew told Congress that the U.S. will hit the debt limit. Raising the limit requires an act of Congress and has often been another topic of last-minute brinksmanship. Joining us now, Senator Jerry Moran of Kansas and a member of the Appropriations Committee. Senator, thanks for being here on a Saturday. Are we going to see another showdown a week from now? Well, I think there needs to be a showdown over the national debt. I hope there's not a showdown over the national raising the national debt ceiling. What we need is Republicans and Democrats who traditionally have agreed that uh, the, the country's financial condition needs attention, that we can't continue down the path that we're on, to come together uh, well enough to do some things to reduce the path we're on, the spending path we're on, and get us in a trajectory in which the debt and deficit are being addressed. And we ought not treat uh, raising the debt ceiling as if it's just one more vote that has no consequence. We need to use this as an opportunity to get our fiscal house in order and again, I hope that doesn't mean that there's a showdown over the raising the debt ceiling. But this is a leverage point in which we can can bring people together to say, do something seriously important for well, the country why, why and though, for our, our future. Why, though, does it seem that every time we reach one of these leverage points, one of these moments to make a stand, all these kinds of things, it never works out so well for the Republicans? The government gets shut down. You guys get blamed for it. Or on the other side, you have something that happened with the DHS funding a debate that didn't work out so well either. Well, you know, what I would say is it's, it's surprising to me because we had a handful of Democrat senators who were very critical, particularly those up for election in 2014, who were very critical of the president's executive orders related to executive am amnesty. But when the time came for them to vote to allow a debate to even occur on the bill, their votes weren't there to allow the Senate to proceed. Uh, we need to have those folks, uh, Democrats uh, as well as Republicans, hear from their constituents that there are important matters that we're going to hold elected officials accountable for. Uh, and we ought not let our elected officials off the hook when they say one thing and then behave differently. So this Republicans are we're interested in governing. We want to, we don't want to have a continual crisis, but we also need the American people to insist that Democrats Again, the, a it, challenge it, it here seems, is that we have 54 we, Republicans and it takes 60 votes to proceed on a bill. It, it seems though that that's sort of what we've gotten over the past couple of months, at least, is crisis after crisis. And coming up, we have the highway trust fund, we have the debt limit, we have the budget, these kinds of things. I want to show you a poll right now. Only 17 percent of Americans right now approve of the job that Congress is doing. Go back to February 2015, 21 percent, June 2011, 20 percent. This is really, really low. Seventy six percent say you guys are doing a bad job. On the other hand, you think about the Senate Majority Leader, Mitch McConnell, who said, give us the Senate, give us the House, meaning Republicans, which voters did in November. And he promised that they were going to get government working again. Not so much. Well, what I would say is that, uh, yes, no one likes Congress. That's a pretty typical circumstance we've found ourselves in for a long time. Uh, but, it again, what we need, uh, I think the message of the last election, November of uh, 14, I chaired the Senate Campaign Committee to elect Republicans to the Senate. Two messages that I take from that election, the president said that his policies are up for review by the voters. In the states in which we had Senate elections, the voters rejected President Obama's policies. But I also think there was a corresponding message delivered, which was, on most things, can't you work together and get something done? And I've seen no evidence that the president is willing to move uh, toward Congress, toward the, the middle. Uh, and what I hope is that there are still Democrats who are willing to do that, help the Senate function, send bills to the president that we can agree upon. And the, the idea is that we can govern, and I would say things are different. Uh, uh, yeah. We've taken more votes in this Senate than the entire in, in one month than the entire Senate last year. Well, you, you, you do make a good point that you need 60 senators to do anything. Six Democrats have to come over on any to get anything through. I, I want to move a little bit, though. I know that you were inside the Supreme Court for the recent arguments over the Obamacare debate there in front of the court regarding the subsidies given back to states and these kinds of things. Number one, what was your takeaway message from being in those arguments? Did you get a feeling one way or another how the justices were leaning, particularly Chief Justice Roberts, the swing vote apparently here inside this? And number two, give me a sense of where Congress is to try and have some kind of plan. If the Supreme Court declares Obamacare unconstitutional, what are you guys going to do? 
Well, this is a case unlike the previous case uh, dealing with the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare, in which the constitutionality of the case of the law was at case. What today's arguments, or what last week's arguments were about, what today's issue is, is whether or not a specific provision in the law is being complied with. And clearly, by the letter of the law, it's not. The question is whether you get subsidies if you don't acquire insurance on a state exchange. The law says to get a subsidy, it has to occur. You have to be attaining your insurance on a state exchange. One would expect a pretty solid uh, majority of the Supreme Court to conclude, by the letter of the law, the IRS is violating the law. The administration has uh, once again exceeded its authority granted to them by Congress. But in the Supreme Court, nothing is straightforward. Uh, my impression in listening to the, to the arguments uh, was very much this is a close case. The yeah. justices that you would expect to be on one side were there. Justices you expect to be on the other side were there. And you've got both Justice Kennedy uh, particularly. But you, could, you added Justice Roberts to the case. I would say it's a 5-4 decision with... Um, with some, uh, the question is, what are either one of those two justices, how do they decide? 5-4, one way or the other, and we'll see how it turns out in the coming months. Senator Moran, we really appreciate your time on Saturday. Thank you, sir. I'm glad to be with you. Thanks.